Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Home Cooking here. Uh, we are going to be talking about safety month, which is a very common October theme. And if you own a home, um, you definitely need to be prepared for some accidents that could happen around your home and some preparedness for your family. So to start out, uh, let's bring Lyndon on. Lyndon. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Lyndon. So topic today is going to be fire safety. Um, been a homeowner for a long time yourself, so I don't know if you've ever had any fire accidents around your home or not, but they are very common, believe it or not. So have you I, I, had any issues? No, I haven't. But when I was a kid, my dad almost burned our house down twice. Once he was uh, left something cooking on the stove and we had, uh, he, had, he had built our cabinets and had a grease fire and fortunately he was able to get that put out after it, it damaged one section of the cabinets. Then he was burning leaves outside. We had uh, cypress on the outside of our house. It was real pretty. And uh, he walked away from the pile of leaves that were burning and it got into that cypress and that's uh, dried cypress is pretty flammable. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, you know, so I, I, I saw, I had two big scares like that. So uh, it scarred me for life. I've kind of, kind of been cautious ever since. Well, that's good points. Uh, the homes of today may not have those same, I guess, situations. You know, right. A lot different of homes and everything. But there are still a lot of hazards around your home that a lot of people underestimate. Um, it's, very, uh, it's a very common thing for people to be recommended to have a fire extinguisher in their kitchen. And everybody thinks when I say a fire extinguisher, they look at these fire extinguishers on the side of these restaurants, these humongous ones, or mm -hmm. in hospitals, or in commercial buildings, and, and that's not what you actually need, you know. They make these smaller fire extinguishers that are designed for personal use, and I've even known uh, emergency personnel that suggest, you know, they keep them in their trunks even, you know, because you never know when you're on the side of the road and you may see a fire or something like that to try to mm -hmm. help somebody. But, but, but for the home itself, they suggest keeping it under a kitchen cabinet or a very accessible you know, area of the kitchen away from the appliances. So in the pantry, possibly, or something like that. But those fire extinguishers are very beneficial. They make different kinds of fire extinguishers. Some are designed for grease uh, for a kitchen, um, you know, and some are designed for a on, on all purpose. So there are different types of foams that they can put in those fire extinguishers to make them designed for more protection than other ones. Um, so they do have a certain amount of pressure built into them. And then that pressure does really dissolve over time, it does mm -hmm. not become as pressurized. And um, they do have a, like a, an expiration type of date that you have to come around and look at them. And it's a pretty long date though. It's not like it's only a month or two. I think, there's, I think they're good for several years. Okay. Um, I remember, you know, many, many years ago, uh, you used to have to recharge those old big giant ones that, and, and the ex, it was my business. So the city, the fire marshal would come out and check your fire extinguishers, make sure they're up to date, mm -hmm. all that. So I guess now they're more replaceable. Um, and I'm looking here online. I mean, you can get these things 50 bucks, 21 bucks. So they're not yeah. expensive at all. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a good thing to have because, well, let's just say you have a grease fire at your house. Let's say you're cooking some of the, like you, like your dad happened, you know, some of the grease gets on the stove. It, you know, say you have something flammable around your stove that you should, but just say these little things, you know, you know a, 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 a towel beside the, uh, the stove catches on fire. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's, that, that starts a, a fire below the cabinetry, like you said. And so, you know, most people wouldn't know to suffocate that fire. People freak out because that's the first thing you do. You freak out, you know, so, you know, instead of, you're supposed to take a larger item and cover everything and, and, mm -hmm. and suck out the oxygen of the fire. But also you have to get near the fire to do that, right? So instead of, you know, and some people may be very, you know, not thinking at the right time. So having one of those little mini fire extinguishers, it's very simple to use. It's a bigger system now. You don't even have to 
a lot of these smaller ones are, are straight just you know aim and pull the trigger and it, and it has a wide foam spray mm -hmm. that gouges everything in its path and it, and, it, and it basically does the same thing as you covering it manually is it, it sucks all the oxygen out of the fire yeah and it, you know an, another thing that people make is a common mistake i believe is is trying to pour water on a grease fire mm -hmm. uh, if you're not aware of what that does it's not pretty and nope. uh you know so that's something that people need to be, be aware of do not put water on a grease fire that's a good science experience to have with your kids one saturday morning get a cup of you know crisco or some cooking oil and put water in it and watch what happens you know it, it separates so fast and that's why when the oil's hot it is expansion is what's causing that grease to pop popping because it doesn't like that water touching it. So it's the mm -hmm. same context. So it's a great science experience to have with your kids on the weekend. You know, let's talk about, let's talk about oil and water and why it doesn't mix. Right. But fires around the home, very common. Um, you know, unfortunately there are homes that get burnt down every year uh, and it escalates in the fall and winter. And that's because people are inside their homes a lot and they are plugging a lot more items in they're using um you know space heaters they've got a lot of christmas lights and they're overworking plugs with the voltage that they're supposed to have mm -hmm. um, a lot more candles are being used uh during this time of the year because you know one they like to have that nice uh, smell of ever when they're having guests over to their home uh two uh you know you'll get those time of the season where they think it looks nice and they like to have candles, you know, burning in their home and everything like that. There's these other products called Scentsies and living oils that people use, these uh, burners <clears throat> that melt that wax and melt those oils and, and bring in scents that way. With well, those burners, you know, those light bulbs get really hot. Or but worse yet, you know, the, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get very hot, the liquid itself or the wax, but it is warm. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your kids walking around putting their fingers in that hot wax or something like that. <laughs> so, right. Um, well, I tell you something. I tell you something. If you've got rambunctious dogs like I do, any candle like that, anything sitting out, um, can you? You have to think about that because our our, our one of our dogs is like a, a bull in a china closet. Mm -hmm. Yep. He he runs over through everything. If that's you know. Yeah. I hear that quite often. The dog's tail will knock the candle over or knock something off the table mm -hmm. because of bigger dogs. The tails are wagging because they're so happy to see you and they don't know what's behind them. Right. <laughs> um, I just uh, saw a meme. Uh, it was a cat caught his tail on fire. Didn't even look. Didn't even look. Tail was blazing on fire. And finally, um, what would made the meme so funny it was a dog. The dog was sitting there watching the cat get his tail on fire. And it kept sitting there looking at it. It's like, aren't you going to do something? You know, it just this panic of sheer panic in this dog's eyes. And the cat, got, <laughs> and somehow the, the fire went out. I guess it burned enough of the tail of hair. And the cat just looked at the dog like, what? You know? That's hilarious. <laughs> in its own way, I guess it's hilarious. Probably not for no, no. I mean, all of our animal lovers out there. But that's one tough cat. That was a part of the meme was, you know, know your competition and know when you shouldn't say something, you know? Something like that. But, um, yeah, so fire uh, fire safety around your home. Um, also, one important thing, uh, you know, I think we mentioned this on a couple of other shows back, but smoke detectors, um, you need to have a plan on when you're going to change your batteries. Um, and I know a lot of these newer homes are hardwired, but they also mm -hmm. have a battery in them. And a lot of people underestimate that because they don't think about that. And the first time your power goes out, guess what's going to happen? Beep, chirp. I don't, know about, I don't know about everybody else, but my dog goes crazy when that happens. She is not a fan of that at all. Well, my wife goes crazy, so that's all I can tell you. Um, she, she's not a fan of it at all either. And usually it goes off at the worst time, like 2.30 in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the, there's all kinds of different uh, you know, smoke detectors. And, and generally, in the nicer, bigger homes that we have around here, they're they're in every room. They're in the hallway, um, you know, and they're not easy to get to a lot of times because a lot of these homes have ten foot ceilings, and so you got to make sure you take time. You know, you got to drag a ladder upstairs. 
Um, you're going to make sure you open up the, 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 the detector properly and spin it. You got to take the little pouch or the little uh, compartment on the side and open it up. It usually is one of those little nine volt batteries, mm-hmm. little box batteries. And um, I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't do it. It takes so much dang time. Yeah. You know, you're going to take a couple of hours to go through your home and do all these smoke detector batteries. And, uh, you know, people have this conception that, you know, all oh, those batteries will last longer than a year. I'll do it next year. Well, next year comes and goes and I'll do it. Now. I forgot about it, but I'll try to do it this year. <laughs> and then, you know, before you know it, you got a couple of beeps and you're like, well, I'm just going to change this one because I ain't got time. You know, and that's a real life scenario story. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. Right so, yeah. Uh, if you can be diligent and do it, I mean, it's a great thing to have on a schedule. So, yeah. I mean, you talk about people talking about the batteries that last a year. I changed ours out probably about three months ago. <clears throat> we had one in the bedroom, of course. The battery did not last a week. <laughs> That's the worst one, right? You're like, what the heck? But um, it happens, you know, and, and I know, like we talked about earlier, was they're hardwired into your home, and that's 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 only to implement and, and to work with some of the security systems also. Some of the security systems that the home builders integrate into the homes have those functions to where they get signals necessarily to the controller pad to show when a fire is activated or when an alarm is activated. So a lot of times when I say hardwired, people think, well, that means that power is always going to go to those. And it's also not necessarily to give the smoke detector power necessarily. It's also a sensor. So people have to understand that, you know, even when your power may be on your home, that battery is going to go out because it's it, the battery is the, is the key source of the power of the detector. So um let's see what's next here um carbon uh co detectors a lot of people underestimate having one of those so a co detector is very uh, necessary especially if you have a section of your home or upstairs that is away from the majority of the other items in the home uh other bedrooms should i say a lot of times you'll see that the kids are you know a lot of the family is in one section of the home away from the others and the CO detector is very necessary to keep that uh, alarm handy because you might have two or three or four other people in your family in the area of the home that may have CO, and uh, that area of the home may get affected first, and you may not recognize it downstairs or away on your wing. And, um, you know, with that alarm going off, it detects it faster, and, and it alerts everybody in the home that this is happening. And these are very tragic stories. But this can happen, and, and, and this is why it's so important to have one of these in your home because it's a colorless, odorless gas for the most part. And by the time you are aware that you're under the influence of it, it's sometimes too late. You're passing right. out. Yeah. So, well, especially if you have a, Especially if you have a fireplace in your home. You, know, you were talking about the hardwired um, smoke detectors. I mean, I think one reason, I mean, you may, you, you may know more than, than – and I'm speculating here, but if you'd had a hardwired smoke detector and you had a fire that burnt through the wire, um, it's not going to go off. So right. you kind of need that independent um, system that's going to be able to go off regardless of what's happening in the in the home. Right. Yeah. Now, and, and also a lot of times, though, people don't even use their alarm panels or the systems that they're hardwired for. So and unless you buy an alarm system that integrates in with all those wiring, all those pre wires then it won't benefit you to have those anyway. So, I mean, the, the battery systems and the batteries are the most important thing to have checked and make sure they're working. Um, because, like you're right, you know, you might have a fire, and this is a very common occurrence. You have fire in the attic for some reason, either lightning-based or uh, electrical something components up there burn out, your, your heater, something gets hot, causes, or, or very, I've seen a couple of times those wired-in uh, attic vents. The motors in those get hot and start sparking, and then mm-hmm. some of your supports or some of your, you know, uh, wood up there gets fired. Well, if that gets that fire up there on top of your uh, ceiling, and you don't know about it, well, that fire gets so hot, it's burning through your roof already. You don't know about it. You're inside your house. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time it goes through all the roof and the ceiling, then it starts hitting to your wall.
what you're up. So definitely something to be in, uh, keep in mind of, um, you know, all these safety measures around your home are important. I think a lot of people may underestimate needing them because they're like, oh, that doesn't happen. We're always safe people. We, we're, you know, we, we, we always do the right things. And unfortunately, bad things happen to good people all the time. Right. Well, you and see so, stories all the time about neighbors at night that have run in, you know, knocked on the door or something like that because they could see the roof on fire. Right. But the people who were inside were asleep. They had no idea the house was on no fire. Idea. It's super sad to see that, too, because, I mean, once you have a fire in your home, it's super hard to control it once it gets to a certain level. Yeah. No matter how prepared you are, no matter how many fire extinguishers you have, there's a certain level that the home, you just have to exit. Mm -hmm. and, and and you cannot go back in it. And so that brings up another area of the topic today is being prepared for disaster when it happens. So if you have a fire in the middle of the night, what is your safety plan with your family. And a lot of families don't think about this. You need to have an exit strategy. You need to know where everybody's going to go. Uh, it, are there multiple ways out of your home or out of your rooms that you're going to be in? Um, I've even seen families that are super prepared, and this is awesome. I'd love to hear this. They have little safety um, roll-up uh, ladders uh, with little chains for the rooms upstairs because it's very common for you to get a cut away from your exit ability of going down the stairs. There might be a huge fire on the stairs or in the middle or at the basin. So you have to be able to access an exit out of the top floor. And so those roll up little ladders, you know, that is a phenomenal thing to have ready for your, for those rooms upstairs. Um, <clears throat> but as families are together, they need to come up with a strategy. It's, it's how to get out. It's how to regroup. It's how to come all together. You need to have a designated point in front or behind your home that you're all going to meet at uh, to make sure, you know, not one person is, so everybody can be accounted for. Um, if you have smaller children, like that are not going to be able to execute a, an exit strategy on their own, you need to have some type of plan that's, that one of the parents is going to have to get to that other child somehow, you know, and I've seen stories of that and, and from some fire safety, uh, you know, people and, and, the, and if you're blocked by fire and you're trying to get to someone that needs your help elderly or child you know something like that this is the best way of doing this and it's not a foolproof way there's no foolproof way against fire but if you have some type of blanket or some type of large uh, item that you can cover your body with they suggest taking it to the bathtub that you have accessibility to dunking it in water getting it soaking wet and putting that over your body and running through the fire at that time. It gives you some protection. It's not foolproof, but it gives you an ability of getting that person that may need your help, you know, or, or may need some type of assistance. Well, that, that fire is so hot. I mean, it can blister oh. the skin, even if it's yes. not touching you. And, yes. you know, one of the other things is, is you would remind people of, of staying as low as you can when you're trying to go through that house. Yeah. Um, Cause the, the smoke is going to rise. I mean, until the, the, the room is full, but usually there's only like a, a foot, foot and a half, you know, when it gets really bad um, where you've got any breathable air, if you want to call it breathable air, the most breathable air. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Yeah. There's so many things you, to, to be prepared for a fire. And I, and I hate going down that list because you can go on and on and on. And it's just like, you know, the, another thing is they say, if you're, if you're trapped in a portion of the house that you cannot exit from, there's no exit, you know, you're supposed to take a, Let's take towels, wet them, put them at the base of the door so you can block the smoke from entering. Mm -hmm. um, you're supposed to try to block the vents going into that house because the fire's going to go into the vents and smoke and come out the vent that you're in. Um, there, there are, I mean, it's a traumatizing event if it ever occurs to you. I mean, it, it's a scary, scary event. And unless you've been near a fire, you have no idea how hot it is. I mean, you just don't. You don't understand how hot a fire is until you've been around one. And I'm not talking a campfire. I'm talking like something on fire. And, you know, campfires are hot. I can get some hot campfires going. But until you've been around a lot of structure burning or car burning, mm -hmm. it's so intense. You can feel it several feet away. I mean, like, when your home's on fire, you're going to be able to feel it from the street. Yeah. The neighbors are going to be able to feel it down the street. Mm -hmm. um, it's unimaginable. It's, it's unthinkable how much heat that fire brings to those substances. And you got to think about all the different um, raw materials that's in your house. I mean, it's amazing how much wood, uh, tiles, hardwood floor, 
uh, wiring, all these different components, and they all have different temperatures that they burn at. Carpet, carpets are humongous. <laughs> what what about the glue they use for the floor flooring? I mean, is that it's, it's all yeah, it's yeah. all you know. And when you get to a certain point in the fire, and you'll see the different stages of a fire. Once it's burning, you'll see these big glows or these big pops or something like that. It's getting to different levels of combustible, you know, combustion that for different items that have that. And that's why fire departments have to be so set about, so careful about going into the homes because they're trying to prevent it from getting worse or from spreading. But they're really not trying to contain it too much. I mean, they're containing it from spreading, but they're not trying to go inside the house and put it out because right. they don't want to get caught with falling debris or explosions of something catching on fire inside the house and everything. So that's a lot of times why you got to get out of the house because firefighters are not going to be able to get in there all the time. Right. You know, they want to. They want to save your life, but it's, they also have to check about the safety of their lives. They exactly. can't send a whole, you know, three or four firefighters to save you because they're trying to make it home also. And that's yeah. why it's so important for you to have an exit strategy. You have to have an exit strategy. You have to sit down with your kids and say, hey, this is going to happen. This is what we're going to be prepared to do, you know. Right. And I can't stress enough, you know, have a backup plan. Have things in your rooms, you know. And as the kids grow older, okay, great. Let's change our plan. You know, now, we got, well, now we're all self, you know, self-contained. You know, hopefully we can take care of ourselves and, and you know, make it. it, it and plans change over the years, you know, so. You have to modify it. That's great, but let's have one. Let's have the right tools that we need if we have to have it, you know. And, and, and let's hope hope to God that we never have to use it. That's the main goal, you know, right? Hope right. to God that we never have to do that day and never have to come back to your burned out house, you know, looking and scrambling for some pictures or for some family momentums, you know, that you that you hopefully you know you can salvage and stuff like that. Let's hope that never happens, but unfortunately, it's going to somewhere, somewhere. Well, it's it's like they say it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, yeah. I mean, you can't be you, you really can't when it comes to the the safety, the health and safety of your family, you can't be over prepared. No, sure can. And, and and there's so many things that we take for granted every day about it's just a simple switch, it's just a simple plug, it's just a simple extension cord. Um, you know, I'm just gonna light these candles for an hour before the guests come over. It's just it. The simple things that we think of that are just so minor, and we wake up and then we our house is on fire. So, right, just be prepared. That's the main story. But yeah, uh, the fire extinguishers, the smoke detectors, the CO detectors, you know, all those things come very easy to get. They're very easy to install. Um, if you need help doing those kind of things, you know, we definitely have guys that will come help you. You know, we're not trying to, uh, you know, be rich, but we, uh, our guys would probably even donate their time to help you change your smoke detector battery or, uh, you know, make sure your CO detector is working. You know, we're in, we're in the neighborhoods of all these homes all the time. It's it's something that, you know, I'd rather have somebody safe and know that we help somebody make sure the family's safe. So, yeah. you know, that, that's the main thing. So ask for help. You know, that's more of that story where I was going to. If you can't do it yourself, if you own a home and you cannot really climb a ladder or can't make sure that, you know, your CO is working properly or Something like that. Ask for help. Don't just say I can't have that, so I'm not. I'm not. I can't do anything about it. You know, there are so many helpful people in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we. If, if I mean, I just I can't stress that enough. Ask for help. I always hear that story a lot of times. Is well, we didn't have anybody. Or, or, or the reason why our house got such a bad, bad disaster or bad, uh, you know, function was I didn't know who to call. I didn't know anybody. You know, and. and Maintenance on a house, it goes back to our whole theme of our shows. There's maintenance on your home. There is going to be things that you have to do in order to keep your home safe and, and at a good investment. You cannot just let your home age and just say, okay, it's going to age. Oh, well, you know, that's yeah. not what you have to do. You have to be, you have to stay on top of it. You know? Right. Right. Well, I mean, that's, that's the purpose behind this show is to help people understand how to how to maintain and 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 take care of their home at a at a safe and effective and efficient way. Um, and so the tips and tricks that you're sharing, I mean, we all know it, but I think we need to be reminded more often than not um, of the severity of, of everything, whether it's a safety issue or just a maintenance issue. Um, they're all if they, if it goes wrong, it's going to cost you. And unfortunately, the safety issue is going to cost you. In, in, in a lot of ways other than just monetary. Yeah. 
So another three quick thing. I know we're running out of time, but just uh, we have uh, Christmas light season. And even before that, we have, uh, you know, uh, Halloween seasons here already. On a, you know, we got Halloween here in a few weeks. And I've already gone around our neighborhood. We have several people that love to decorate for Halloween. Those big blow-ups and all these different lights and everything. Halloween's got to be a big thing now. You know? mm-hmm. um, and, and that's great. I love seeing that. I love Halloween. Halloween's a fun time. I, I remember when my kids were younger, I couldn't wait to go trick-or-treating with them. And uh, I used to try to scare everybody. You know, that was my goal. <laughs> I wanted to scare everybody. But, um, but you have to be safe with the, all these electri- extension cords. You know, we, we have these, we have a, a plug used on the outside of our front of our house and maybe the one in the back. And, you know, those are also have a certain limit of how much you can actually plug in them. And I've gone to some guys' houses and I've seen they have three or four extension cords and then they got another cord that has another like five or six wires running off the of, mm-hmm. a, of, a, of extension, you know? And I'm like, holy cow, how much, you know, how many amps is that? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so you got to be careful with those things. If you're going to be running that much power, you need to invest in probably enlarging your outdoor, you know, fixtures as far mm-hmm. as your plugs. You need to look at your breakers. You need to see how can I develop more power availability without overdoing those type of things. Because, yeah, breakers are supposed to break when they get too much voltage in them. But what happens if that breaker hangs in your garage because it's got so much voltage hanging in it? Well, guess what? That, that, that's going to cause a fire and really quickly, especially in an electrical box. Yep. Um, so you got to be careful with how many power you're putting through those plugs and how many extension cords you're running. And I've even seen extension cords where they're plugging into the boxes themselves, the extension cords get a fire. And it starts sparking the extension cord, which mm-hmm. then sparks the grass in your yard. Yep. So, you know, you could easily have a, a yard fire that then comes up onto your house and catches your house on fire. Yeah. Or, or, you know, so those things happen all the time. Um, Got to be prepared for those type of things. Real quick, also, outdoor grilling. Everybody loves a grill mm-hmm. when it gets cooler outside, right? So how close is your grill to your home? Um, what type of de- flammable debris is around that grill where some embers are, uh, you know, pieces of the, of the fire can easily jump off of and start igniting that section of your house as well. So a lot of these homes have these beautiful overhangs that are made out of wood. Some of those embers catch on some of that wood, it becomes flammable. Well, the backside of your home can catch on fire really easily. So yeah. These are all things that you have to think about. Deep fried turkeys. We all heard poor stories. Oh my about. gosh, I've I've seen the <clears throat> I've seen the video where the fire department's out there and they're they're showing what what happens with the with a deep fried turkey. And I mean, when he drops it in there and that oil comes out on that open flame, it looks like a bomb exploding. It is a bomb. It's a bomb. It goes back to what we talked about initially: oil and water. I mean, that hot oil is mm-hmm. not going to do well with any type of water moisture that's left on that turkey. That turkey's got to be completely defrosted, no ice in the center, completely dry. You know, you try to wipe that thing off because when you set that turkey in there, you don't want to have that oil come back up on you. <laughs> you talk about a bad day, that's going to be a bad 10, 15 years because oh your skin God. is going to have some bad problems trying to regrow and graft. So my, my uncle, my uncle deep fries turkeys and he does it very well. And I've always wanted to, but I'll be honest with you. I'm just, I'm not confident enough to do it with the risk. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I could figure it out, but I'm like, eh, no, I, I, I'll, I'll put mine on the smoker, but, uh, you know, deep frying it. eh, that's a, that's a little, little risky for me. Well, Daniel, we got about a minute left. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take myself off screen. I'm going to put your information up so you can tell everybody how to get in touch with you. And while we're doing that, I hope this doesn't distract you. I'm going to play a little video. I think that everybody might, uh, uh, it'll be, it won't have any sound to it, but I think everybody might uh, uh, be able to appreciate it and, and enjoy. All right, sounds good. Well, here we are. Let's see. Oh, did you, you found that. Did you find that? Did, oh. This is not the same one, but that cat just stands there. <laughs> that I mean, is awesome. He's not moved at all. It's just like, okay, well, maybe it'll go out in a minute. Maybe this is the same one. That cat just, I'll tell you, I watched it. It was on a meme, and it was so funny. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that dog's just sitting there going, holy cow. 
All right. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody coming and joining us today, talking about home uh, fire safety month, uh, home safety. Uh, prepare for the worst. You know, your family is so important to you. Let's make sure we're doing the right things. Um, you know, if you need help, let the, let us know. Uh, if you have any, uh, you know, desires to, you know, talk more, give me a call. We'd love to talk to you if you have any questions. Uh, 833-COOKDFW, uh, cookdfw.com. Send me an email. Whatever's the best way to get a hold of me, we'd love to help you with anything around your home. Hope your family stays safe, be prepared, and thank you very much. See you all later. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,